Now a specific consideration comes up when performing a multiple regression, uh, and that's the potential issue of multicollinearity. Now multicollinearity refers to a situation where you have multiple predictors uh, that are really aliases for the same thing. Uh, that is for when um, predictors really have such a high correlation uh, that their inclusion in the model actually ends up resulting in um, each of them explaining the same variance and thus neither of them really getting credit for it in the regression. Um, since we remember that the parameter estimates we get in multiple regression are really partial regression coefficients, that is they represent the unique influence of each of the variables, uh, if you have two variables in a regression that are really the same thing, uh, neither one is really going to have any unique variance to make predictions of the response. Uh, so both of them can end up coming non-significant, uh, even though either one of them alone would have been a useful predictor. Uh, now the issue of multicollinearity is actually rather easy to check uh, for. All we have to do is simply go to our parameter estimates section, right click, go to columns, and then request the VIF. And this is the variance inflation factor. Uh, and what this is going to tell us is the degree to which the variance of our parameter estimates, that is the standard error, uh, how much that has been inflated by the presence of other predictors in the model. Uh, you notice our VIFs here are around 2.0 and 1.6. Uh, this is actually fairly low by VIF standards. If any of our predictors were collinear, that is if they had such a shared variance, uh, that they were actually becoming close to the issue of collinear, uh, these VIFs would be much higher, up near 30 or 40. Now a rule of thumb with VIF is something around 10 or more should be cause for concern. Uh, that is, if you have predictors where the VIF is around 10 or more, uh, you should really consider if uh, both of them are really needed in your model. That is, could you get away with one of them and not the other? Uh, or perhaps make an aggregate measure using maybe the average of the two or the sum or uh, something like that depending on what's appropriate for the situation. Now typically uh, you won't get as far as fitting an entire model before you notice that there are collinearity issues. Uh, that is this is something you can check really easily for uh, before you even fit the model. Uh, the simplest way to do this, especially when you have a set of predictors you're considering, is simply by going to the analyze multivariate methods, multivariate section, uh, where you're able to plot the bivariate fits, that is the um, just the bivariate relationships between your predictors. Uh, and in doing so, you can get the correlation among them. Uh, so what we would do here, if we were actually just starting out to fit this model, uh, is actually take our three predictors, age, severity, and anxiety, put them into the Y, and once you run this, uh, what you're going to get is actually the bivariate fits here, and the correlations among your predictors. Now for two predictors to have really issues of collinearity, uh, typically you're going to find that their correlation will have to be above 0.8 or 0.9. Um, and really if you are fitting uh, two predictors to a model, or using two predictors in a model, uh, that have such a high correlation, uh, you should really be considering what you think the additional benefit's going to be of having that second predictor uh, given the first one's already in your model. Uh, now in this case, notice that we don't have any predictors that have relationships among them really above 0.6. Uh, the most highly correlated of our predictors uh, is the severity of a condition and the anxiety a person feels. That's only correlated at 0.67. Uh, so right away, we really don't need to be concerned in this case about potential issues of multicollinearity. Um, so this is really probably the first place that you would want to look, uh, probably even before you fit the original regression, uh, to see if you have any issues. Uh, now in an upcoming video, I'm going to discuss the idea of outlier analysis, uh, which is also used through this platform, and that's something you would want to undertake early on. Uh, so it's good to make a habit of simply when you're first starting to fit these regressions and to really investigate your data, uh, check out the correlations among your predictors and make sure you're not uh, considering using predictors that are, are very, very highly correlated. Um, if you really need to utilize both of them uh, in some way, again, consider the idea of making an aggregate measure or uh, doing something with both of them so you don't need to fit them both in the model.